This is Susan Hingle. It's March 2nd, 2023. And um, I'm going to call to order the Monroe County Women's Commission meeting. Um, the commission serves as an advisor role to assistant residents, businesses, and the government of Monroe County in addressing issues of gender equity in all aspect, aspects of society. Our mission is to advance the status of women in all areas of county life and to champion women's contributions to local culture and society. Um, everybody has seen the agenda. Um, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Or anybody need changes to the agenda? Do I have the microphone? Okay, there we go. Um, I don't know if I need to ask for this now or if it's just when we get down to the subcommittee topic, but the top, the name of the gender equity committee, I was wondering if we could use, um, follow the, follow the CJRC, what the, what those, uh, what those uh, acronym, what that acronym is, which is um, justice response instead of justice reform. So it's just a minor justice edit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So if we could just, if we could do gender equity and justice response for that subgroup to follow along with what they are doing. That's it. Oh. I think we just make the uh, is that okay change to the agenda yeah okay cool thanks a second Aye. 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 Now it is. And okay, we all have the minutes from last month and we all read through them. Are there any changes or can we have a motion to approve? A motion to approve the minutes for last month for February's meeting. Can I have a second? Aye, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Approval of minutes passes. Okay, so we're gonna get into commissioner updates. Um, I didn't take the best notes for myself, so I'm gonna say, um, remind everybody that the Indiana Commission for Women, um, we were supposed to meet yesterday, and of course the day that I went to actually could go, no one showed up, so that was really sad. Um, no one could make it, so I still haven't met with them. Molly's actually met with her more than I have. Um, and they're having their International Women's Day, which is next Wednesday in Indianapolis at Indiana Government South or whatever, um, and it's at 10 a.m. Um, I know some of us are going to try to go. And who's all who's all going? I am. The date, sorry. March eighth. I am. I think. Um. I have um, some additional information. I did talk to uh, Molly, uh, yeah, Molly Turner King about the MOU. Right this second, I can't find those notes. Um, but she and I are gonna work on that together. There, wait, there it is. I'm happy to draft MOUs. Um, Oh, according to Molly Turner King, uh, we have to have the Girls Coding Camp project approved by the Board of Commissioners who will need to approve the project before funding can be expended. Um, it can be presented at the Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, oh, and so she would like to meet um, some of us or all of us or whoever can with Molly and uh, Angie Purdy. So I will get that set up too. 
So that would be me and Tiana and oh, then yeah. you, if you would like to remember we, Oh yeah. You subcommittee. Yeah. Yeah, subcommittee. yeah. That'd be great. Um, so I'll send an email to Molly and Angie with you and Tiana in the loop of that. And then we can work that out. Um, and then um, I was supposed to meet with the ACLU, but it was sicker than a dog. So we're rescheduling that. Um, and I think that's all I have. Maria, welcome back. Do you have anything? Thank you for having me back. <laughs> yes, I do. So, um, you know, in line with our commission mission, um, I'm also, well, me being a member of the National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum is not in the mission, but it's in line with the mission. And so I would like to bring to the Women's Commission, um, a petition that National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum, it's a whole long um, title, but we call it NAPOF. Um, so I'm going to read this. You all have a copy of it. Um, it's titled Stand with Asian American Hoosiers. This is a petition. Um, we launched a petition in March of 21, urging Governor Eric Holcomb to take swift action to condemn and combat racism, xenophobia, and intolerance against Asian Indianas, Asian American communities. In two years since Asian American Hoosiers have endured a slew of troubling hostilities. The Sikh community suffered a horrific mass shooting at the Indianapolis FedEx facility, Purdue University students, staff, and faculty were subject to mock Asian gibberish uttered by the Northwest campus chancellor during a commencement ceremony. A young Asian woman was stabbed on a Bloomington bus for being Chinese. Indiana has a chance to take action on the issue as other states and localities have. It is time for Indiana to build a robust policy program and organizational infrastructure to assure the AAPI Asian American Pacific Islander Hoosiers are able to thrive in a safe and inclusive environment. Environment As a meaningful first step, we respectfully renew our call to Governor Holcomb to take the following steps to ensure that Asian Americans, no matter their background, the languages they speak, or their religious beliefs are treated with dignity and um, equality. Such actions will help make Indiana a more hospital place for everyone. So these are the three things that we're asking. Uh, initiate official action to recognize and condemn acts of racism, xenophobia, and intolerance against Asian American persons, families, faith communities, businesses, and institutions. Number two, implement procedures and programs to help Asian Americans targeted by acts of anti-Asian racism. Asian American Hoosiers need systemic and accessible mechanisms for reporting anti-Asian racism and receiving concrete support. We urge Indiana officials to pursue restorative justice-based solutions rather than escalating law enforcement to prevent further incidents. And finally, number three, lead efforts to establish a statewide advisory commission on Asian American and Pacific Islander affairs. Such a body should serve as an accountability mechanism and a direct and a direct communications pipeline between Indiana's Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and the Indiana governor's office. These types of commissions are an essential step to prevent expressions and escalations of anti-racism. And I do just want on record that uh, Indiana is only one of is one of only five states that does not have such um, an advisory commission. So I would like to move that we uh, sign this petition or do you need to move it? Can I move? Um, I'm moving that the uh, Monroe County Women's Commission um, as a commission sign this petition. I moved. Or I motion. Oh, two. If she motions, we need it first or a second, and then a vote. No, I don't know. I'll for I'll motion to. No, you did. Sorry, she I motioned motion. to approve. Sorry, you're second. And I second it. Sorry, I'm sorry, Tiana. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion is approved. Thank you so much.
Do you have anything else you'd like to report on? Yes. So I uh, attended the last uh, commissioner, county commissioners meeting, and I just wanted to update you guys on some of the um, highlights of that. There were, there were some, you know, budgetary and zoning things that were passed, but they did approve um, the sheriff's salary uh, to remain the same, which is the same as the uh, prosecutor. But just so we know, the state actually sets that. So it's not within um, our county's purview, from my understanding. Um, they also approved software to keep websites ADA compliant which is good and we support. Um, and they received a nice report from um, the probation department. They also approved a vendor to repair the seals on the jail showers um, with care, taking care for the air quality. So those were the about the highlights that I recorded. Any questions? That was the county commissioner's meeting. Can I step back for a second? There were two things I forgot, I'm sorry. One, um, I did want to tell you that I have talked to Greg Cron, Cron, I don't know who his name is, um, about setting up a social media account for us, whether we want Facebook or LinkedIn, I was thinking LinkedIn maybe, or something where if we wanted a social media presence at all that we could do it. Um, it does have to be um, approved by the county commissioners before we do it, but I just thought it was something that I would put out there that I thought might be something we'd be interested in. My guess would probably be really LinkedIn. It seems to be the more professional um, format these days. And then um, also, does anybody have any comments about that or... Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I support LinkedIn, but also, I mean, we want to go where the users are. So that's also Facebook and maybe we can make a TikTok. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, don't get me started. Um, okay, so we'll think about that some more. Um, and then I also want to just highlight that um, in... Uh, the Monroe County Now chapter, our last uh, chapter meeting, we had the um, student ambassadors from uh, the ex student equity ambassadors come and talk about their um, role in uh, racial justice policy, or no, anti shoot, I knew policy. It wasn't anti hate. I don't, I can't remember what they called it, what the final name was. Do you know? I, I believe it was the anti-racism policy. Anti-racism policy. Um, and that it was a really great meeting. And that just so you know, they uh, MCCSC approved that unanimously. So finally, after a uh, hiccup in the weeks before, they finally approved an anti-racism policy for MCCSC. So that was just something I wanted to share. Um, Nikki? Do you have anything to share? Your mic's not on. Are we doing are we doing speakers like during our time or during public comment? I put her on the agenda. Huh? I put her on the agenda. Okay. Um she was supposed to, well, not she. I say that because she has a better memory than me. After the last meeting, I don't remember if you guys remember, uh, we ran home and uh, attended the office hours for the county, the county commissioners um, and met with Julie Thomas, um, Commissioner Thomas. Uh, most of it was to talk about Maria's reappointment to the board. And um, if anybody else has a better memory than me, please, if we talked about anything else, I don't think so. But I think it was all pretty much taken care of that she would work with the board to make sure it happened. And obviously it happened because Maria is back with us, so. Can I interrupt for just a minute? Can we just go around and introduce ourselves? Because I think we probably should have started that with the meeting and we forgot. I'm Susan Hingle. I'm the chair. <laughs> Maria Douglas. 
county resident? Paliato County resident. Juliet Hardesty County resident. Okay, that, that's cracking me up. Nikki Williamson, I'm the secretary. And I'm Tiani Roger. Would you? Um, oh yeah, because I cut out introductions because I wasn't. Well, I'm, I don't know. Well, I didn't. I didn't think we needed it anymore. Oh, fuck. we don't have name tags. Okay, so I'm going to go to Tiana for any general commissioner updates. That's not. Uh, mentioned later on in the thing. Do you have anything? No. Miss Molly. So brunch was amazing for the Elevate event. Um, it was hosted by United Way and was awards for the young persons in different categories. Um, can't be, um, um, it was great. I didn't meet Jordan until like it ended up going upstairs. Like I was emailing her and, and Nichelle was supposed to attend, but she was ill that day. So I just kind of stood and I watched and I was very young for the, or old for the event. Um, so I was actually approached by a, another woman that works for um, Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. And she thought I was somebody else. I was like, but I don't know anybody. So if you want to hang out. So she ended up being one of the award presenters. Anthem was a sponsor and, and it was, it was fantastic. It was super inclusive and like all these different like activities to get people involved in figuring things out. But um, when I did meet Jordan, when I went upstairs, um, her best friend actually won one of the awards for public service, or I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was, but she's super excited to continue to collaborate with us. And, and we didn't have much time to talk. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about that relationship. She really seems excited about what we're doing down here in Monroe County. And, you know, we've discussed, finding funding from them and, and different things. I, I think Jordan is an, an awesome young woman that's, yeah. that's ready to help the local communities from a, from a statewide perspective. So I thank you again for the invitation. And, and um, it was, it was definitely like social and interactive, but not finding her until we sat down. It was, it was, it was great. But Ms. Julie, do you have anything that you'd like to share? Um, I, I attended a portion of the uh, Community Justice Response Committee meeting, but I missed a lot of it. So I, I don't have, a, I don't have a, a lot of details to report. So I know the committee meeting itself seemed to still have a lot of, a lot of conflict, honestly. Um, and then, but after that, I've just seen, I've just seen that there was some extra meeting that happened regarding personnel that the sheriff was asking for. So I think there's been some progress, at least for immediate needs. But as far as jail plans go, what we're kind of watching out for, there's not a whole lot of news at this point, I think. So, yeah, that's my sense. I don't know if others were at the meeting for the whole time or not, have more details. That's it. Thanks. Um... The Bloomington, can, oh, 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 Bloomington um, Commission on the Status of Women. I have, no, that's not what they're called. Yeah, that is what they're called. I have not heard from them. I don't, um, I need to reach out again, but um, so we're not sending updates or I need to send minutes to them or I don't know, but I've not heard from them, but hopefully we can, if we move our meeting, we can work on that. Um, uh vacancies we still have a seat open i had a friend of mine apply who works at the center for rural engagement who would be um a great asset and though it's been a struggle for her <laughs> to get her to apply um she's really upset about what's going on with the jail so she's like i want on so but i have tried to follow up about her application and it seems to have been missing um so she has sending one directly to commissioner thomas in the near future 
Um, I don't know why I have girls coding camp on here twice. We also need the board of commissioners designee. We we don't have that. Board of commissioners? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. But I'm they're actually not voting. here. Oh, what? I'm actually here. Who? Oh. It's Julie Thomas. I'm actually here. Oh, Julie, thank you. We're, we're not excited about that at all. We were <laughs> Um, oh, I just lost my dinner. So, um, girls coding camp, I will report just a minute on that. And for my part of that is I did reach out to Molly Turner King about the MOU. Um, and she wants to meet with, so according to Molly, it has to be voted on by the commissioners and approved before they can uh, designate funds for that. Um, and she wants to set up a meeting with her and um, Angie Purdy, and then it would be you two, and then me if I can or want or whatever. I would ha be happy to go. So I will um, respond to uh, Molly and um, add you guys into the conversation so we can set that up. Um, but that's all I have about that. Can you clarify for me for just for the minutes what needs to be approved by the Board of Commissioners specifically? So according to Molly and Commissioner Thomas can change uh, change change that if it needs be. According to Molly, um, we have to have the Girls Coding Camp project approved by the Board of Commissioners. Um, they will need to approve the project before funding can be expended. Um, we should project our present the proposal, projected or the project proposal at the Board of Commissioners meeting. And if we're not able to attend, uh, Molly or Angie would be able to assist us with the presentation. Um, so. So that's gonna be determined after the meeting that you guys- I think, up. yeah, when we meet with them- You'll we'll meet and then kind of come up with a plan. And then at some point we'll have a date that you're gonna present that, is that- <laughs> Sure, I'm clear. That sounds right. Okay. Just just to clarify, it's because there's a contract involved and the commissioners have to sign the contract part of it. So that's that's the only that's the only reason why it has to come before us. But we look forward to it. Yes, thank you so much. I think it's around the MOUs and then the, the grant where the funding comes from. It's not from a grant. It's not from the grant. I always thought it was a grant too, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, if it, does anybody else have anything to say about that right now? So we're gonna move on to new business. Um, we currently do not have a vice president. Um, Miss Maria Douglas was our vice president before she um, expired out. And now that she's back, um, but it doesn't <laughs> expired out. I don't know. Termed out. There we go. Um, so we have a seat. So do we um, have a... I, no I nominate Maria Douglas for vice president of the Monroe County Women's Commission. Do I have a second? I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Motion to approve Maria Douglas is our vice president. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Um, I would also like to talk about changing our meeting day. We had discussed in our work session um, to change our meeting day back to the third Thursday. Originally, I spoke with Dina at the office and she said no. And then we followed up. And then um, uh, Ms. Purdy said that we can move back to the third Thursday um, and it will stay in this room. So that's exciting. So if um, I have a motion to change the meeting day back to the first third or the third Thursday of the month at 5 30 in the Nat C. Hill room. Let me know. Third Thursday, five thirty. Yeah, Hill. 
Do I have a motion to approve? I motion. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Does that mean we'll meet again this month or no. are we going to forego that? Okay. Next month. Motion passes. It does mean that there's a really long time between these meetings. So I don't, um, so that just means by the time we meet again, that we should all have lots of things to talk about and we should have, um, yeah, things to solidified about girls coding camp and hopefully our vacancy will be filled and all sorts of things. Um, I did after our meet at uh, work session, I did have, we talked about setting up the events calendar because we talked about having a more, uh, a bigger supportive presence in the community. We talked about the certain meetings that we wanted to attend. I did create that calendar. I put on commissioner meetings, I think office hours, county council, I don't know, other things that just are standard meetings to attend um that we could just keep track of where we're going and um events that are happening i think i put on the international women's day too thing so is it possible for us to add events to that calendar as it should come be up? i think it's we can not public but it's shared with you guys okay if it's not let me know great and it's, yeah just a google calendar <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> we also discussed at our work session to have monthly speakers sign up, um, that we would all, we had all expressed things that we were particularly interested in or having people come, you know, inviting people, um, I think is part of the thing about being a more inclusive board in, you know, setting. And I think a lot of that comes from, you know, inviting people to have, um, a place to speak. I think um, one of the things that I found the most interesting because it was my first meeting leading when I led the now meeting was um, these two young students that were doing this great work in MCCSC and how thankful and appreciative, how thankful they were to be asked to speak. And I was like, but you're doing us a favor. But you know, it was just like they were so appreciated. Um, just being invited to talk and it just really, it surprised and moved me in a lot of ways and also reinforced, you know, what I believe about, you know, inviting people into your space and what it means and um, yeah. So do we want to, how do we want to handle the monthly speaker? Nikki's off already because she's, it got one here today or inviting people. And I don't know if, I mean, if it needs to be, and I could find out for sure, like if it should be on the agenda, if it should be just during public comment or whatever, I don't know for sure. So I put it on as um, the agenda item, but I don't, it doesn't necessarily, I know, I know it doesn't necessarily need to be an agenda item, but it seems like it's more of a formality and supportive if it's on the agenda in that way. I like the, I mean, I, I'm not sure either. Is public comment limited? Is it a limited time frame for public comments? I don't think for us. For, I mean, usually you want to be mindful of the time. So if we okay. don't say there's a limit, then, I mean, we would love it if somebody would come and comment, right? But, but you know, that would, if we don't say there's a limit, then, you know, give an inch and no, that, I mean, I like the idea of putting our speakers on our agenda right. just for the formality of it and just the tracking of it from. Oh, yes, Julie. Yeah, um, I, I do recommend that you put your, your guest speakers on the agenda and that way they're posted uh, on the calendar and folks will know about it as well. Um, and public comment time is up to you all if you want to dedicate a specific block of time uh, or if you want to have it uh, at the end or the beginning of the meeting is really up to you. Just put it on your agenda. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, that answers that. So how, wait, how do we want to handle monthly speaker sign up? Do we want it to be just, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, we could send around a sign up about it or we can, I mean, like assign months, specific months to people. I don't know. I brought a speaker today because it 
happened. And I was like, yep, come on over. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? And I'm just curious how it works. If we just kept a group text going, <laughs> we could communicate when we have a speaker for a certain month, but I know we have to be tracked for communication and everything. So um, that's what I would think is, is maybe we assign a month to everyone and there's X amount of us. So we each have two months a year to bring a speaker. And if we're struggling or can't find someone, then we reach out and say, Hey, like, I don't have anyone yet. So do we want to sign up genius? Sure. Okay. I'll make a sign up genius. On the subject of sign up genius, I was supposed to send out a sign up genius for the, the attendance for the Monroe County council meetings. And I have neglected to do that. So I apologize. I will, that is still on my to-do list. I will do it this time. So forgive me, just remind me. So the speakers that we're bringing, which I, I think is a great idea. It, it's, we were bringing them we're and not, we're not. Cause that, I, ideally, I think at some point we would want people to want to come and bring stuff to us to present. Mm -hmm. Um, but that we're not quite there yet. So no. we just want to get this started. Is that, mm -hmm. and we can just pick a topic or pick like if that happened organically during a conversation that you needed an audience for, or, you know, I'm just making things up. But Well, I okay. think to me, a lot of that should come out of as we're out. I mean, we all talked about our, our pet passions last time and those, and that as we were out in the community, attending meetings, providing support, you know, I think, again, organic that would be an organic thing about, um, you know, finding people or whatever. So. Yeah, I mean, I could I could sign up for a month and aim to have something by then and we'll see if it happens, you know, and be that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, we did in our work session talk about sub setting up subcommittees. Um, we wanted, which we already had the informal girls coding camp, but I definitely just want to set that up as a subcommittee. I believe that is with Tiana and Maria. And I was, I was interested in helping out if I can. I don't, I don't you know, like, I don't want to get in the way, but if I can support and help whatever you have going on, that would, I'm happy to help out. So, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Do we have, we don't have to vote on that, do we? Julie, do we need to vote on having subcommittees? Um, you, you can appoint people to subcommittees by consensus if you wish, or you could vote. You could go either way. It's up to you. I oh, know. So we already agreed to it. Okay. Um, we also have the subcommittee for gender equity and justice response um, that um, we had established that to be a um, summit in response to the issues going on in the community with um, the the jail and other other things. So we just just to pay attention and make sure that um, women are being uh, considered in all the developments. Um, and a lot of that is watching the community justice, no, CJRC, it's community justice response uh, meetings. Um, so we had a, we talked about a subcommittee who was on this, Julie was- Yeah, it, that was, yeah, that's for Maria. That as well. Um, and me, I know, I think, yeah. Okay. Um, those are meeting, they meet every other week on Mondays at 4.30, which is not the best time, but it is what it is. So that meet time again? 4.30, uh, it's twice, a, I don't know if it's every other or twice, twice like second and fourth, every other Monday. Monday or something, but it's on there. It's every other. Is it every other, not just, okay. okay. And again, what makes it so great is you can either intend in person or um, whatever. Also, I'm sorry, Annie, before we get to you, we're almost there. Sorry. Um, one of the things that I think um, 
which I should have mentioned before. One of the, we started, I started the meeting with this way, and I think it was one of the best things that came out of for me the work session with uh, County Councilman uh, McKim was starting our meetings, always talking about what our mission statement was, which I thought was, I mean, I brought it to now. I don't know. I started our now meeting with our mission statement and we'll start every meeting that I ever have, whatever board I'm on with the mission statement for what we are. I thought that was um, a really great thing. So I just want to see that. So we have our speaker, Annie. Um, would you like to introduce our speaker? I would like to introduce Annie Aiken, the community wellness coordinator. And I forget who you're representing already, but she has a big title and um, she's here to share the cool work that she's doing with us. Thank you. I'm with Purdue Extension Nutrition Education Program, and I serve three counties, Monroe, Lawrence, and Brown. And of course, I'm here to talk about Monroe County. Um, and some of the work that I'm doing in Monroe County, I'm actually working with Julie on a little bit. So um, Julie, you can like chime in or correct me if I'm wrong. So, um, so I'm working with... Um, the Monroe County Health Department, I'll start there. And we are working on our community health improvement plan. And we have established three subcommittees. And um, one is on uh, substance abuse and mental health. One is on um, discrimination and equity and bias. And then the other one I'm co-lead on is poverty and navigating health and social services. And I think that's where Nikki found the most um, intersection. And actually, I totally love what you are doing, like introducing your meeting with a mission. I'm doing that too with our groups. And then um, that's where we intersect is um, trying to help people get access to services that that can't get access to those services that they might need in in the in the uh, social services public health arena, and and so actually that, that's only one area in which I do um, some work in the county. But um, my job is working to help people get access to healthy food and physical activity with and those people who are, are um, on limited budgets mainly. Um, so that's where I'm really trying to focus my work and, and the work of the poverty and navigating discrimination and bias. Should mention there was another, a fourth category that the community health improvement plan was um, pulled out was um, housing. And so we already have the housing heading home project and, and that's being handled outside of the community health improvement plan. Um, so... Um, so we have we convene monthly in the poverty and navigating health and social services subcommittee, and so do the other groups as well. Um, I'm just not leading them, so I don't know all the details on what they are doing. Um, but in within mine, we are working on. Um, a couple of different areas, getting transportation for people with um, who can't get transportation to their medical appointments and um, specifically outside of the county. So if you're a Mount Monroe County resident and you need some services that are maybe in Indianapolis, how can we help? How can the community Mount Monroe County Health Department, whomever help get you there? Um, I should actually mention that the community health improvement plan was a joint um, uh, task with the uh, city of Bloomington, Parks and Recreation, uh, Monroe County Health Department, and IU Health. And so, so that's a big group. And, and I'm just um, a, a community member, but also this is the work that I do. So I really love helping people and being involved in this work. So I, I offered to help um, on my committee. The other area is um, trying to work on how can we add navigators to our community to help to be in the space in which people need the help to help them get to the services that they need. So uh, a human being to be at whatever place that people congregate who might be needing help getting access or navigating through the different um, health services that we have within our county. And we have HealthNet and we have the Monroe, the community kitchen, and we have all kinds of wonderful services in Bloomington. Um, but we're thinking broadly instead of um, in, in a smaller space, like they have a navigator at the community kitchen, which is amazing. And we want to kind of duplicate that model countywide. 
So um, we know that there's funding uh, that may be available and um, the Monroe County Health Department feels like this is a role that they might be able to house within the health department. So I think, I feel like things are moving along where we may be able to actually see that come to fruition within a year or so. I don't know, that might be crazy, but I'm I'm overly optimistic in general, so. (laughs) Um, so that's one area, and that intersects with the work that I'm doing um, with Julie on the Community Voices for Health project, and which is now moving on to a, a new uh, group called Monroe County Health uh, MC. Yeah, we're still like Monroe County Health Equity Council. Yes, yeah. McKeck, as some like to say. (laughs) So it's strange, but it it helps me remember what all the acronyms stand for. So backing up, um, the Community Voices for Health project was a um, funded by a grant from Robert Wood Johnson that the Community Justice and Mediation Center, um, I don't know, was awarded. And then so the Community Voices for Health uh, went around the county to collect voices that are normally unheard and and underserved. And um, in order to move that meaningful work forward um, after the grant has ended, it's ended, but they got some additional funding. So we're kind of in transition. Um, We created this Monroe County Health Equity Council. And so we can continue that work to gather those voices that are underheard and and then help them be heard by county counselors uh, or commissioners and and by the people who are making decisions about them. So they can be have um, informed voices to help them make policy. So yeah, it's super big, super huge, but really, really, really imp- impactful if we can get the Monroe County Health Equity Council to be um, a viable um, group. And, and that's what Julie's been helping, um, been informing us on and been a part of over the last couple of years, really, as it's evolved. And um, so we've been meeting monthly for that. And we're really trying to form what this group is going to look like, how it how it's going to be viable, how it's going to be impactful and um, and sustainable. And um, so we have a, a smallish group at this point. So we're always looking for more voices who who want to be a part of the group. Um, and right now we're really like we were just meeting um, to talk about what is our structure, you know, and and how are we going to r- make sure we run um, effectively? And um, so we kind of voted on that at our last meeting. I think I told you it was Monday, last Monday. Yeah. And, um, and so we'll meet again on March 20th. And um, I think it's at six and on Zoom. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I'd be happy to add anyone to our list or um, send Nikki the, um, and I think I said I'd do that and I haven't yet. Um, so on either one, actually, um, for the poverty and navigating discrimination and bias, and um, which is a community health improvement plan, or the Monroe County Health Equity Council. Was that a lot? <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds amazing. I love it. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, I was intrigued and wondering if there's anything that's been specific about um, uh, reproductive health care. Is that a focus at all for like, especially with the equity council? We don't have a specific um, focus of oh, okay. a health issue. Yeah. We're talking about health in all policies. Right. So all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, whatever. And that's where we're trying to find our way and to mm-hmm. plug in like, okay, so what policy is there coming up or will pot- in the future potentially be created that might affect rep- reproductive health for women Oh, okay. Of cool. color, or you know, whatever yeah, the case may be, um, or not, just mm-hmm. for anyone. Sure. And then, how can we get that voice to be heard um, on that topic? And so, but I think the hardest part is going to be making sure we have the voices there 
<laughs> and um, then they're in, in the right moment. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, that's great. Yeah. Reproductive health and all of them, you know. Yeah. I, again, I don't know what they do, but have you guys done any work or any collaboration with the Center for Rural Engagement? I know they, I just know I have a friend that works there and I just know that she, you know, it does, they do a lot of things, especially with public health stuff in the, but I, I'm just curious if, um, like uh, o- overlapping. Yeah. I have worked with the IU Center for Rural Engagement on other things um, in my other counties, uh, county. Um, and I, and when you said IU Center for Rural Engagement, I'm not sure. We have, there with the Monroe County, with the Community Voices for Health Project, they've worked with some other people at IU. Um, and I, I don't know if it was CRE or, something else so i thought it was cre and then now i'm confused so. just thinking of resources that maybe not everybody yeah, knows about to yeah, make sure yeah. there's we have lisa marie napoli who yeah who's served on that with us yeah but i don't think she's with cre so I it's so old. i know what you're talking about because i mean i can't remember what department she's with but so CRE, there's also IU Start and all this to work with different areas. But I, I would think if it was the rural engagement, it would be another county. So not necessarily the road, but the other counties that you would work with. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. How can we help you? Yeah, I think, well, first of all, I well, I think you, I'm glad that I could come here and tell you about the things that are going on because we do have a lot of intersection. Um, I, I think we just, we all in, in all of our communities need to um, continue to be open to listening to other people because we get siloed. And so I'm glad to know that you guys are doing similar work. And um, I don't, I never want to duplicate the work that somebody else is doing. And I always want to work with somebody and be a team together. And because we can get more done. I was actually thinking of my daughter today and I was like, if she would realize, <laughs> you know, that, that she didn't have, if she didn't want to do it all by herself, it'd be so much better. You know, we'd get so much more done. So, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> our kids are similar ages. Um, but I, I don't know what the answer to that question is, but I guess, um, I can muddle through and say, um, if, when you hear from someone, if you hear from someone and you think your that their voice or their lived experience should be heard, we want to hear it. And if they're, but the, the biggest problem, the biggest challenge, not problem is that do they have the time and would they have the, I don't know what the word is. Would they be open enough to sharing that? you know, so we can include, we can include more voices. We can in, have more impact, more people of different, um, with different experiences to be a part of the, the groups. Um, so I think that is the main thing I can do. Do you, um, when you kind of document those voices, you collect them, you know, kind of compile them, then who are you giving that information to? Like, is there a formal process that you go through or? So the voices aren't really being collected anymore. Um, They did do that uh, through, I think, almost two years. And, And that, I think if you were to go to the Community Voices for Health or the CJM website, I think all the, like, not, no, you're not going to see people's like, this is what, you know, but I think you could see the data that they collected. And, um, and then through, like, they went and met with people one-on-one. Um, and because when they started, then, you know, COVID closed everything down. So some of them were uh, Zoom, some of them were one-on-one meetings. Some of them were um, like, you know, meetings like in person where they had, you know, a bunch of people come to the library. Um, So they just collected all the data from all these people. And then different people like stood out, you know, they became passionate about hearing, having people hear their voice. So those are the people that we still have with us is they, they were on the advisory council and then um, have stayed. 
And so uh, hearing their um, about their experiences kind of led to, you know, having more conversation. And so that that's where we're at now is who who's able and willing to to be a part of this work. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's cool the work you're doing as as I was hearing you talk, I was thinking about some conversations I had with some other women about healthcare and their experiences here in Monroe County um, just recently. So once you get that information, what's next? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you do next? That's mm -hmm. what I'm curious about. Yeah, that's what we want to know, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's to inform policy. And so when we I think what we get it, when we get information from individuals it's it's kind of storing the it, the knowledge that we know this person who has this lived experience and then being able to call them call on them in the future to share their lived experience with the policy makers to affect you know change yeah yeah I think I answered that Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. what I'm no, saying. So, so although you're not collecting necessarily voices or things like that, but if someone wants to share, should we send them to the group? How does that work? Mm -hmm. Like, like the other day, I got some survey by email from Monroe County. I don't know if all of you all got it, but it's like, who would I vote for for mayor? Mm. It was all these questions about the mayor. Mm -hmm. And it just came to my email. I don't know how, I mean, my text, my phone. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. But every candidate was on there doing a poll. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how, so none of you all got that? Mm -mm. Hmm. Well, interesting. Well, I was special. Mm. I think the B squared bulletins mm -hmm. doing a. I think the B squared bulletins doing a mm, poll so right now. We just randomly select people. So how do I they don't get know. my cell phone? I don't know. It's weird. Okay, so when I got that, I was thinking as because as you're talking, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I got this poll that none of my other commissioners got, which I'll look into that later. That's another subject we'll talk about. Um, now with that, if a person has an experience and they want to share, because I mean, one of the ladies I was talking to this week, I think her story should be shared. I mean, I think her experience, the things that she's experienced in healthcare could inform some policy and some, can inform some change. Um, because you don't want someone living in the community to think that our they can't go to our hospital. Mm -hmm. This isn't, a, you want them to go to get the service mm -hmm. that they need. So how would we, should we encourage them to join the board, come and be the public speak spokesperson? I don't know. So I'm trying to see, cause I want to go back to her. Cause I'm like, as I was listening to her, to think that you have to travel all the way to Indianapolis in an emergency and you're telling your spouse, like pass up all these hospitals to get to the North side of Indianapolis. And you live here in Barrow County, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think first of all, I mean, she should go to maybe the health department to share that information, maybe. But I think if if you encounter somebody who has an has a really impactful story and they're passionate or you're passionate about um, what you've heard, then you know, join us or um or share with us, you know, and so that we can call upon you. And I think you're calling up a very important question for our council is how do we, how do we catalog that? Like, yeah, it, that's, that's a crazy thing to think about, mm -hmm. but I don't know, but I, but the best thing I can say is, you know, join or participate or, you know, let's put your name on the list. You know, I, I, I found that I have on the poverty and nav navigating discrimination and bias. I have some people on there that now I never see, but I still keep sharing the minutes and they're like, Oh yeah. And I'm sharing this with the sheriff's department. I'm like, Oh, mm -hmm. oh that's great. You know? So if, if somebody just wants to get meeting minutes or whatever, I think we could do that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not, that's not an awesome answer, but uh, oh. to like immediate change, but um, you know, for, Try. But no, I think it's great just to know this group exists. Yeah. I mean, 
It's great to know that too. And to have a space that you can share the information. Yeah. I mean, I'm at capacity on joining anything right now. Yeah. My new word is no, you know, but <laughs> I will share, share, join, get yeah. many, um, get minutes and everything. Yeah. But I think this is a great thing that you're doing. Yeah. I, I'm very passionate about it. And I think that that's what Nikki and I were talking about, like that, uh, you know, yeah. Let's go. I call it grand Steve. ideas. Yeah. 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 I've got my grand ideas. So I, I was just going to say also, Annie, um, please know that, you know, because part of our mission and how we see our role as a, not a, a new body, but a freshened up body now that we're trying to find our path here. Um, if there are things happening um, in the, the Monroe County government spaces and um, that, you know, are impacting the women of Monroe County. Um, that you're hearing about, mm -hmm. feel free to share those kind of voices or stories or those informa that information with us because I know we see ourselves absolutely as advocates mm -hmm. and to make sure we're um, amplifying those voices, particularly those who aren't generally at the table or voices that aren't heard. So please um, help share that with us whenever and if you you find it appropriate now we're all allies we can <laughs> work together and be, yeah so i love thank you i have so how i have a question so how are you i mean because i think i i you know as someone who's new to tables the table a lot of tables you know just especially monitoring you know, legislation, especially state legislation. And, you know, there, I can't even remember the, the count of the bills that were up at the state legislation for this session was enormous. It was unbelievably enormous. You know, how, how are you guys monitoring that? I mean, are you guys, I mean, is someone reading through and going, oh, this affects us? I don't know. Is there a newsletter that somebody's, you know, because somebody's already doing that, right? And so maybe, or hopefully, you know, tapping into that information. Yeah, um, that's that is one of the things we're working on right now. And what um, Julie and we, um, Kate Wiltz. Um, so we have a county council and city council representatives who are on, and uh, Sue Scam Scamalini. Um, they're a part of this group. And so they're helping advise us on the best way to be able to monitor policies. And we started, we're starting with um, just kind of observing some of the different meetings and um, like county council or city council and, and others. And, and I think this, I really love coming to meetings like that's crazy. I mean, some may think I'm crazy, but I like coming to meetings like this and kind of talking about what we're doing. And, and I think this is pretty valuable too, but yeah. And some of us who like the Monroe County health department, they're already doing that work out with their full-time job. So they're able to advise some of some of the policies, but the, the primary, like we would love that like overall big time goal is to be like, to be that group that when something is like before something even starts to get on the table they come to us and be like wait how is this going to work for this community so in the future that's where we'd like to be but how do we get there and that's like okay so I guess we're going to start by letting people know that we're here you know well I have two a question and a recommendation. <laughs> My recommendation is to connect with uh, Jordan Teske Harris and at the Indiana Commission for Women, um, just to make a introduction to let them let her know what she's doing. She is a part of you know, um, she's a great contact probably to have. Um, would probably be really interested to hear about with the work that you're doing. Um, that would be my recommendation for that. My other question is you, I mean, with a part of the extension office, right? So you're out of the extension office, you're a part of a network throughout the state. So are, are your counterparts, I don't even know how many extension offices there are, not every county, you know, every county has one, right? Okay. So, but you're over a couple, right? Is the new person, are you, 
are there are your counterparts in other counties doing similar work? Is this uh, something from top down, like that everybody's doing, or something that you're hoping to share to the rest of the state and through the extension offices? Um, it, I'm I don't know if any of so I'm a, I'm a community wellness coordinator. I'm not the same as um, all the other members in the extension office. So we do have 92 extension offices in the in the state but um, not as many community wellness coordinators. So that's, you know, I'm covering several counties because of that. Um, but I don't know of anyone doing the same work that I'm doing. I mean, there could be other people doing similar work, but um, we do try to share out as much as we can. And in fact, um, in April, we're going to be presenting statewide to the through the Indiana Department of Health Department of Physical Activity and Nutrition to their State Nutrition Action Commission Committee. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of acronyms that I'm uh, trying to remember here. But yes, yeah, so we're going to be sharing about this statewide um, to, you know, those who are know of this network. Um, but it's, it's and, and we, Liz, um, the, the uh, Center for Justice and Mediation Director uh, went to the IU Rural Conference last year and show, shared. I, yeah, never mind. Yeah, um, but she shared it at that and doing a conference presentation. Yeah, so this is a Monroe County specific um, project. <laughs> so how can we find you, or what's the contact information, or website, or? I, I know Nikki knows how to get a hold of me, but and thank you, LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think we follow each other on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I do have some business cards that I can pass around if you want. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll probably, I'll, if, if you have business cards, I'll probably email you and Jordan to introduce you guys together. So you have an introduction. And Nikki can put it, Nikki can put it in the minutes. Yeah, she can put it in the minutes. And then if anybody, I'm just going to pretend like we have an audience, you can access them there. I'm going to pretend like we have an audience. Yeah. I know, but for people online, yes. how they would find her, her contact will be in our, in our minutes. Here, you can pass. And if I can clarify, you said Liz Grinnett with CJAM yeah. is who you're working with. Okay, so she should be our next speaker. Yeah, she's she's a, a dear friend of mine. Um, I didn't realize that. Yeah. yeah, the work she's done has been amazing. So it is, and I met with her this morning. So, and I told them that I was coming here, and they were happy to hear that. So, thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Annie. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Here. This is great. Before I call for public comment, and um, and I know in my in the new business we covered a lot of things that were came out of um, our work session, and I do want to make sure, and we can talk about it next time. I can add it in or whatever, but um, I really did go through our work our, our work session minutes and tried to our notes and tried to add those in to our thing. So to make sure, but if there is ever any, if there is if something that I overlooked or you guys feel like um, didn't get enough attention, make sure we can add it to the next agenda. Um, additionally with that, I should have mentioned, is Julie still on? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I um, was noted on, Julie, are you listening still? I sure am. So, um, and maybe I should have mentioned this earlier and I'm sorry, but um, we, um, so Molly Turner King got, uh, is been, was in our um, meeting notes and she wrote to me about our meeting, about our work session and told me some things that um, were conflicting to me. So I just wanted to um, let everybody know 
that said um, what our response was to that, which was for, for she, this is Molly's response, because she had saw our thing about town hall. And I was like, oh, we didn't have a town hall. We just, you know, like making sure we knew we decided not to have a town hall or whatever. And she said, for future reference, there is not a work session exception to open door law. All the members may title a meeting as a work session. It still constitutes a meeting. If it was a gather of a majority of the commission's members for the purpose of taking official action, which is defined, receiving information, deliberating, making recommendation, establishing policies, making decisions, or taking final action. The open door law requires memorandum memoranda to be kept for meetings, day and time, place, members, general substance, et cetera. Um, the memoranda should be available within a reasonable period after the meeting for the purpose of informing the public. Um, I thought there was something too she mentioned about, oh, a record of all votes taken, because it was my understanding, we didn't vote on anything, that that's what we didn't do in work sessions. But I'm, I mean, I just wanna make sure, I'm not interested in breaking laws necessarily, except for speeding, just kidding. Um, so, <laughs> my understanding I, i'm just going to chime in my understanding and i i'm pretty sure uh, julie you helped us kind of make sure we understood this clearly from our meetings with julie which was that work sessions are work sessions that we are to do no official business no deciding factors no um votes on anything and we were very conscientious of that and then mm -hmm. anything that we wanted to bring forward had to be put on the agenda for our actual meeting and so that's what we did mm -hmm. right is that's that correct understanding so that's why i was confused with what molly had said to me yeah i i'm i'm thinking what molly is talking about is the fact that if you have a meeting of a of more than a quorum of the board, you have to um, post that that meeting will happen. Which we did, okay. And where, and uh, and open to the public, and be open to the public. So you can't say we're gonna meet at somebody's house and then not have it open to the public, right? So it has to yeah. be somewhere yeah. public. That's, okay. that's, yeah. really, that's really it. And I think you can, your minutes from that meeting can just reflect who was present and, um, where you met and when and what time it was and um, and then you can note what you spoke about if you wish to any degree that you wish um, you know just some general notes and it's really just to have a record for you all to was it your question though Susan I mean you didn't say it just now but when we were talking about it before about voting because I when I was looking at council's work session they were voting in their work session so was your part of your question are we able to vote in work sessions yes you can yes you can and you, it, can. you can call okay. you can call it a work session as a way to say we're going to preemptively discuss items a b and c but we're not planning to vote on them right now but we're going to have this discussion it's going to be in public and here's where and when, and so you post the meeting. Um, and you can call it a work session, or you can just have another meeting. You can just call it another meeting if you want. You don't have to call it a work session. And um, and yes, you can vote, but if you do, you have to reflect that in the minutes. Um, and, and as many meetings as possible, we'd like to have on Zoom or recorded, but that's not always required, right? It's It's not always possible, of course. Um, and it's certainly not required, but if you just want to call it a meeting, that would be fine and dandy as well. Okay. Did you did you come to our meeting tonight, Julie, just so we wouldn't have to crash your office hours in a little bit? Oh no, <laughs> um, I came because I wanted to be honest, <laughs> but I can't I can't quite get downtown in time. No, I'm so just kidding. I'm going to be joining on Zoom <laughs> as many weeks as possible to be part of this great group. If you'll have me, <laughs> I do have a question about the subcommittees that we are forming up. Is it possible for subcommittees to meet and talk and work together separate from a full quorum of the committee commission? Yeah, because then there's not quorum. It's like if we right. have quorum, okay. okay, then it's a yeah. meeting with all its formalities and voting. Okay, because we we as a subcommittee wouldn't be voting on anything. Right, we would right. just be collecting information to bring back. Okay, 
and we don't have to be like setting things up to be available as a public meeting for anybody to attend if we're I trying to get so. up and work on something. I don't believe so. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, thank you for that. Sorry, I meant to. I... I have a question. So I know we talked about name tags. Is there something like is the name? Is there some a company that we get our name tags from, or is there something particular the name tags have to have, or anything like? What were you thinking? Like, I need. To, is there something official? What What do name tags look like? That's what I'm I was thinking. thinking. You would have the county, this or out there, this, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the thing is for like the lo county logo, your name and the Monroe County Women's Commission. The reason why I ask is my students can make name tags, that's some name tags, because we make them at IU for IU official name tags, like they make them on campus a lot. So, but we would need to get permission to use the county logo. Is that right? I don't know. Dina, Dina can help you with that. Um, uh, okay. just contact Dina and let her know what you plan on doing. Perfect. So we can get name tags made, but I can, I'll contact Dina, but I'll get us name tags. Thanks. Okay. She can get you the, the file that you need, right? Yes. <laughs> yep. That's what I need. The file. Yeah. Well, thank you, Commissioner Eurje. You're welcome. Yes. It was on my mind too. I was going to go to the engraving place over there and buy some. Yeah. My money? Oh, no, I was just going to go see if I could just go buy them. <laughs> um, so uh, this is our, There's. I don't think there's any public comment. Is there any public comment? No. What do I have to ask? Is there any public comment online or in the room? No, we're all here. Thank you. Um, do <laughs> again. I would what? Someday we'll have someday this room will be packed. That's right. Please note that I brought somebody with me today. We invited her to the table, but I was like, you can sit in our public arena. It's fine. Good but job. I would like to thank Annie again for coming tonight. That was wonderful. You were our first uh, speaker and. Definitely not going to be our last. So if I and if there's any way that you, that we can help you that you think of later as the you know your group gets for you know formulated, just let us know. Yeah. What's the best way to contact the group? Is it there's is there a email that's for this group like this commission or just one? I'll email? email you our thing. Okay, then I'll have that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because yeah, we do have an email that goes to everybody. Unfortunately, they took my your name, Mocha Woke. <laughs> Sorry, it is that's what it's called. Do uh, so. It's called. Anybody? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank so you, Commissioner much. Thomas. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, ladies.